Hello friends and welcome to another video lesson from DDoS Talks. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and click the bell so that you can be notified of new uploads. This will be the first video of a series on Notepad++ tips and tricks. In recent months, uh, we've seen the growing popularity of the text editor called Notepad++. And it's largely um, an effect of the COVID situation and people needing to work from home and suddenly discovering the powerful features, useful features of Notepad++. So in this video, we will learn about macro, how to use a macro in Notepad++. First, we must, we must have heard of macro for sure, for some of us uh, use, we may have used it in Microsoft Excel, in other applications and a macro is used to uh, to do repetitive tasks in the case of Notepad++. Plus Plus. Okay, so here you're looking at the screen and I've just opened the about the help about um, screen or window of Notepad++. Plus Plus. Okay, so if we go here, first we need to establish the need do we really need a macro? When do we need it? When do we not need it? So we don't need a macro when using Notepad++ if the task we are about to do is something that can be done by simple things like doing a search and replace. So in this case, we have a, a listing of names here, bulleted with using a simple asterisk. And let's just say, the objective is to replace each occurrence of the asterisk with a dash. Then in that case, we don't need a macro. It can be accomplished easily by a straightforward search and replace. So let's do that right now. I'll do a control F while positioned at the character I want to replace, I'll do a control F. So remember, we're not using a macro, a macro right now. I'm just showing you when uh, do we need a macro and when do we not need it? This is one of the cases when we do not need a macro. So we do a control F, this brings up the find it dialog. And then you click on the replace tab and then you specify the character. We already did that because uh, we've highlighted the character asterisk and did a control F on that. So it automatically wrote that character here in the find what field and in the replace with field, you will specify what character to replace it with. So in this case, I want to replace it with a dash. So when I click on replace all, then it effortlessly does the thing for me as expected, isn't it? So in this case, this is one of the cases or use cases where in we do not need to use a macro at all because it can be accomplished by um, something that's ready available to Notepad++ other than a macro, which is doing, in this case, a search and replace, okay? So this is not what we need. When do we need a macro? We need a macro when we are doing some repetitive task in Notepad++ that cannot be accomplished by something like search and replace or things like of that matter. So let's look at an example. First, you can, we can look at the high level steps that you need to do to create and use a macro. So the first thing is to position your cursor strategically at the preferred position prior to performing the repetitive task. So uh, don't be so confused. What I mean by that is you are preparing because a human being is so much smarter than any program. Remember that. And the same goes for a macro. So uh, a human being can can be told specific um, instructions, but a macro has to be told very explicitly. But the other thing about a macro is that it can perform the task if it is repetitive, meaning exactly the same step for each line. If you're doing the same thing for, look at this line here, this list of names over here. A macro expects you, it will perform well if the command you gave it is exactly the same for each line. Not only that, you are preparing it for the next line. Okay, so let's look at that. First, you look at the high level step that you need to do. You position your cursor strategically. You will see it in the examples later on. 
And then you go to the menu and click on macro. There's a macro menu here. You will click on macro, start coding, and then you will perform the repetitive task, which I will show you in a while. And then you will, at the menu, click on macro, stop recording. And then if you want to test the macro, if it is working as expected, then you will click on the menu again, macro playback. And then this click on macro, run a macro multiple times, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we'll go back to this note later on. Remember that these are just the high level steps, generic high level steps on how to go about creating a macro, playing it back and making it work for you. Okay, so let's look at one example here. So we have the first example is we want to enclose, here's a list of names over here. We want to enclose each name pair, which is of course consisting of a first name and a surname, family name. You want to enclose each name pair in quotes or single quotes using a macro, of course. So uh, following the steps over here, which you can easily capture using a print screen. If you want to, you can pause the video if you wanna take note of these steps over here. Otherwise you can also Google, no problem. Now let's move on with the, go back to the first example. So here, our objective is to enclose each name pair in single quotes. So like we said, the first thing to do is to position the cursor strategically. So I wanted to, I want to put it here. Why? Because my intention is to start by entering a single quote. So this is the best position. I am at the beginning of the line. This is the correct position. So after positioning the cursor, I will do a macro start recording. Okay. After doing that, I will now do the repetitive task, the manual. So I'll enter a single quote over here. And then I'll go to the end of the line by clicking on the end key. And then type the single quote again. And then um, I want to go to the second line to prepare it for the next action. So what I'll do is I click the down arrow key and then click the home key. Okay, that's one full cycle over there. And then I will now click on the macro menu, stop recording. Okay, as if uh, for you, nothing seemed to have happened, but the actions I've done have been recorded as a macro. The next thing I will do optionally is, if I wanted to check or test, the functionality, if the macro is performing as or behaving as expected, I would click on the macro menu again and then do a playback. And then you can see it perform that action on another um, instance or another line. And then to do for the rest, imagine you have hundreds or thousands of lines of such cases or data name lists here. Then you can now go to macro and then run a macro multiple times, click that. And then when you get to the dialog, you click on this, run until the end of the file, and then you click on run. Okay, so there you have it. It accomplished our objective, which is to enclose each name pair in single quotes, which it did, right? So this will save you a lot of time, a lot of effort of doing those manual uh, time consuming, um, labor intensive, activity or task, right? So we started off with a list of name pairs and then we ended up using a macro. We were able to enclose each name pair in single quotes. Now one trick, I'll come back to this one. Remember the high level steps. I have a little note here, which is very important, which I found out from my own uh, experience of using this. So I put a little note here, which is very important. If you wanted to accomplish what we did here, which is to replicate that chains um, in an automated way, all through all the rows of this data. In my case, I don't know if other people have a workaround for this. In my case, I ensured that the last line is an empty one, else it will not, uh, it will somehow fail in the last few lines. So what I mean is, this last line over here I'm pointing at now is supposed to be empty. There's nothing in it. If 
I don't have this blank line at the very, as the last line. The, what happens is that the last line here with value doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get the change. It doesn't, um, the changes I've applied are not propagated to this last line over here. So remember that, ensure that the last line is an empty one, okay? So we've seen the example, the first example, which is enclosing each name in quotes. Now let's take it a little bit, a little uh, step further. In the example number two, we will convert this list, the same list of name pairs. We convert this into a comma separated list of values in single quotes. Not only that, uh, um, I will put them all in a single line. So this list I will convert into a comma separated list of names. Each name pair enclosed in single quotes like this, but after each name, there's a comma, and then comes the next name. You, you will see after we do it. So again, you start by positioning your cursor where you want it to be, where it will logically work. So I put it here. And then I will start recording. Click on the macro, start recording. I'll enter a single quote. I'll click the end key, E-N-D. I'll type a single quote again. I'll type a comma, comma separated. And then I'll press on the delete button or the delete key. That is one full cycle. And then I will stop recording macro, stop recording. After that, if you want to test the, that the macro is working as expected, then you click on the macro menu again and then do a playback. And it did for another occurrence or another instance of the line. And then to do for the rest, again, imagine here we only have a few uh, names in this list, but in reality, we could have thousands, hundreds, and it would still work. So I will now go to macro and then run a macro multiple times, click on this, run until the end of file, and then click on run. And there you have it. Okay, so this, so now you've seen the name pairs, it used to be like this, without the single quotes. What it did is it enclosed each name pair in single quotes, and not only that, they are comma separated like what you do, what you see in a CSV file, in Excel, CSV. And not only that, they put them all in a single line. Here you see two lines, but you look, look at the line numbers, one, two, three, four. This actually consists of a single line. You're only seeing it as a multiple line only because in the view option, it has a word wrap. If I uncheck or untick this one, then you will see the single line after all. Okay, so in this second example, it's an expansion of what we did in the first example. In the first example, we enclosed each name pair in single quotes. In the second example, now we not only enclosed each name pair in single quotes, we made it into a comma separated list. And we also converted it from a list like this into a single line. Again, uh, one, thing that you need to take note to accomplish this in a multi-line, multi-record type of listing is this. You ensure that the last line is an empty one, else you won't get the expected result. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I hope we really um, learn something new over here. And this is an exciting new playlist on Nordweb++ tips and tricks and um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I do suggest you click that bell, I mean the subscribe button, click the bell so that you can be notified because this is a fresh new um, journey and I invite you to get, uh, to join me in the journey in, in uh, digging into the golden nuggets that you can find out about Notepad++, uh, things that will make your work easier and through these turbulent times. Thank you and God bless and See you in the next video.